I know those leafy greens, fruits, vegetables, and legumes seem like they are growing there just for us to eat, but this is simply not true. I mean, plants are living organisms just like us. They don't want to be eaten just like we don't want to be. Which means they have some pretty sneaky defenses to keep us away from them. And here's a whole list of seemingly harmless plant-based foods that are actually trying to kill you. Kidney beans. Did you know that if you eat just four or five raw kidney beans, you're going to get severely sick. I'm talking like vomiting, diarrhea, like stuck in the bathroom, just things coming out of both ends. And this is all due to a molecule naturally found in kidney beans called lectins. Now these lectins, they can't be digested by the human body, nor microorganisms, other pests or insects or animals that also might try to eat kidney beans. These lectins, they are like little monsters in the human body. They cause all different types of terrible things. They cause our red blood cells to clump. They will bind to carbohydrates and various minerals so that we can't absorb them and use them. They'll bind to cells lining our gut to disrupt nutrient absorption so that we don't digest and absorb things how we normally do. They just wreak havoc on the human body. Now, you might be thinking, well, I've eaten kidney beans. And yes, because if they're processed correctly, so now we have a pretty time-honored tradition of first you soak these beans in water, and that sort of leaches out a good amount of the lectins. And then if you boil the beans, that inactivates any lectins that are left. Then we have kidney beans, safe to eat. But raw kidney beans, very, very dangerous. Grapefruits. Or maybe you've even heard the term grapefruit effect. And this is where if you're taking any prescription medications or active drugs and eat the citrus fruit, it actually elevates the levels of these drugs in your body. Grapefruits have this really unique and weird defense mechanism due to a molecule they contain called furanocoumarin. In our body, this molecule actually inhibits several enzymes in our liver and our digestive system from working. So it sort of stops these enzymes from doing their job, which means that any medications you're taking, these active drugs will not get degraded or broken down how your doctor sort of assumed they would. This means you get a much higher dosage of the medication than your doctor planned, and it can lead to a whole slew of different adverse side effects from taking that prescription. So you gotta be careful with grapefruits, which is easy for me because I find them just absolutely disgusting. I do not like the taste. Next up is soybeans. And maybe you think like, well, I don't eat soybeans, but I mean, soy is such a common food ingredient. Uh, I mean, we have soy milk, tofu, soy sauce. I mean, that's just the beginning of the list. But did you know that soy actually contains an anti-nutritional factor? This is called trypsin inhibitors. They're a natural enzyme found in soybeans. These inhibitors, they are bad, 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 bad news for us because once we eat them, they will bind to our digestive enzyme in our intestines called trypsin. So that's why it's trypsin inhibitors. It binds to trypsin so our enzyme can't do its job, which is to cut up and break down protein. This means even if you're eating like a high protein diet, our body isn't able to digest it, absorb those nutrients, and use it. The protein will just go right through you and do no use at all. So the net result of these inhibitors is lower protein uptake, which can affect your growth and your metabolism. The good news is that now food processors are very aware of this anti-nutrient. So anytime they receive raw soybeans, they're sure to boil them, which can inactivate these trypsin inhibitors. Let's talk about potatoes, well, specifically green potatoes. And this is an interesting one because I remember learning this as a kid, like my mom, I think it was my mom, maybe my grandma told me like, if you see a potato's greening, you do not want to eat this. But you know, they didn't explain why. And I was a kid, I probably wouldn't have understood anyways. Now potatoes, they turn green when exposed to sunlight. So this is why you should always keep your potatoes in a very dark place. It's not that the green color is what's poisonous about the potato. In fact, the green color is just due to chlorophyll, 
which makes, you know, most other plants green as well, it's that the green color is a good indicator that the toxic compound solanine has accumulated. And it's this solanine that can make us very, very sick. Well, solanine is not that likely to kill you. It's really not that potent of a toxin. It will make you very, very sick. I'm talking about vomiting, stomach cramps, diarrhea. So be really careful with green potatoes. And in fact, don't use them because even if you boil them, this doesn't destroy the toxin. Frying sometimes destroys a very small percentage of the toxin, but really to me, it's just not worth it to mess with these green potatoes. Cassava. So maybe cassava is not very popular in your country, but for the whole continent of Africa, this is a very staple and common crop. It's sort of like a tuber, a potato, uh, but a very dangerous, poisonous potato because uh, it creates cyanide. Now, cassava, if it's just growing, it doesn't contain that cyanide, but any time that the plant takes cellular damage, like if someone tried to bite into it or chomp on it, if the cells are disrupted, then it creates the cyanide to poison that pest or that predator. This happens because on the cellular level, two relatively safe compounds, linamarin and latrotlin, if the cell is disrupted, they are converted into that poison, into cyanide. The effects of cyanide will set in within mere minutes and you'll experience things like vomiting, dizziness, heart palpitations, and violent convulsions until eventually you will die of cardiac arrest. I'd say that's a pretty good defense mechanism. Luckily, humans are creative and don't give up easily, so we now know that if you take the cassava, you peel it, soak it in water for hours if not days, and then cook it, then you're good to go and you will not get any cyanide poisoning. Here's one I don't think most people have heard of. This is celery and celery contains these molecules called soralins. And these soralins, they are phototoxic or photoirritants, which is just a fancy way of saying if you touch celery uh, or if you eat it, it actually makes your eyes and skin very, very, very sensitive to the sun. And look at me, like I'm pale enough. I was already sensitive to the sun. So celery, this is the last thing I need. If you're someone with a garden and you're growing celery, I would handle it with care because being exposed to these soralins, even just touching it, this can lead to sunburns, rashes, hives, and blisters on your skin. Handle with care. Have you ever heard of the poison called ricin? This is actually from a legume. It's from castor beans, which can also be used to make castor bean oil, and they naturally contain this uh, very lethal poison. Now, a dose as small as two milligrams, so picture just like a couple uh, salt grains in your hand, that's about two milligrams, that can be lethal to humans. The reason this poison is so lethal is that in the human body, it actually shuts down completely all protein production, which leads to things like organ failure until you die. And it's for this reason that historically, ricin was a very common biological agent. Nowadays, ricin poisonings aren't quite as rare because we've learned that we can inactivate and destroy this poison simply by heating the raw beans to 80 degrees Celsius. Do you remember hearing as a kid, like you should never ever eat the apple core because those apple seeds are poisonous? Maybe it's just me, but I have like very vivid memories of this. And, and this is true, kind of. So the apple seeds do have this molecule called amygdalin. And when amygdalin is in our body, in our digestive tract, it is converted to cyanide. And this could lead to cyanide poisoning which apparently plants love to play this card of cyanide poisoning. And while this might sound very bad, our body can handle a bit small amounts of cyanide. You'll be okay. Plus, if you eat the apple core, but you don't really chew or crush the seeds, if the seeds are intact, they will just go straight through you. The amygdalin is never released. To release that molecule, the seeds have to be broken open. And then if you eat that, yes, cyanide will be created. Now, if you're one of those special people who eat the whole apple, 
Don't worry, you will probably be okay because it's estimated to get a lethal dose of cyanide. You need to eat somewhere between like 100 and 500 apple seeds. So if you eat an apple a day, you will be okay. Fava or fava beans, I've heard it said both ways, but this is another legume on our list. And that's because, again, these beans contain an anti-nutritional factor. This is called vicin and convicin, and it's basically because of these molecules that fava beans are really an underutilized crop. Well, these molecules won't hurt most of us. There's about 1% of the population that just genetically, they lack this one enzyme called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. And if you lack this enzyme and eat fava beans, you will get something called favism or hemolytic anemia, which is pretty terrifying because if you eat fava beans, your red blood cells will just start bursting and breaking down. So pretty terrifying and really explains why fava beans aren't a very common crop. Rhubarb. So I love using rhubarb stocks to make a nice crumble or some type of jam, but be sure to keep the rhubarb leaves off your plate. This part of the rhubarb plant contains a toxin called oxalic acid. This can lead to things like stomach irritation, kidney problems, and even weirdly leaching calcium from your body. It's unlikely that you'll eat enough rhubarb leaves or ingest enough of that oxalic acid to kill you because it's estimated you have to eat 10 pounds of these leafy greens. If you enjoyed this video, next I would recommend checking out my video about five food bioterrorism cases that shocked the world.